Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, this is Amaro from uh, LACMO. Uh, we're going we're gonna to start without uh, sending in room and they'll be here in a couple of seconds, all right? A couple of minutes. All right, no problem. Yep, we'll get started. Um, Go ahead. Let's see, let me just put the agenda up here really quick. All right, well, so uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, got a nice size crowd here, like a few people are still joining, but uh, just to kind of go over uh, the agenda today, there's a video we're gonna show um, here just in a couple moments. And then we're going to, David's gonna break it down, talk about, um, it, uh, talk about it, who was at fault and also talk about preventability to uh, two different uh, terms that are used in this industry. Uh, that mean um, mean very different things, and we'll discuss those. Um, and in case you ever put in a situation like this, uh, on how to handle it, which will be uh, some some good thought provoking conversation. So hopefully you can uh, take this information in and apply it to your your uh, skill set on a daily basis. Um, then also just keeping in mind, we'll talk about uh, entering exit in the shoulder, pre trip inspections. And then the importance of the roadside inspection, some of the initiatives that FedEx put out uh, in regards to um, their, their CSA points have went up. And so their FedEx ground uh, drivers will probably be targeted a little bit more for roadside inspections. So um, those items will be discussed today. All right, so let me, let me start the video. And then um, after that, we'll start breaking it down. So let me switch screens here. All right, here we go. Video doesn't have audio. Just to give some context in case anybody's not looking at the video, but just over the phone, um, this particular truck has a vetter camera and uh, vehicle two, which is a tractor trailer, got into the second lane and, and passed them and got in front of uh, the truck with the camera. Ooh. I'll go back a couple seconds there. Then the truck that passed, uh, the, the truck with the camera, uh, suddenly got over because of a stalled FedEx truck in front of him. Got over at the last second, and the truck with the camera rear ends a FedEx truck that was kind of parked on the side median and kind of in the freeway as well. I think we can stop it there. A lot of this rest of the stuff is just kind of talk. You see this truck. Um, ends up in the median, it ends up um, cracked windshield, quite a bit of damage. I'm sure that whole front end of that truck is destroyed. But um, yeah, so uh, a lot of lot of things happening in this video. And so then we're gonna, we're gonna break it down. We'll have David talk about um, how the ATA will view this, CHP, how would FedEx view this, um, and what, what, what should be done in situations like this, David? Good morning, everybody. Um, there's a couple of aspects of this, of this accident. Uh, one is very easy to spot, and that is uh, who's at fault. The fault is of the driver, the FedEx uh, driver who 
looked like uh, was on the side of the road and was pulling back onto the road. I don't know whether he swerved off and came back, but he is more on the road at the time of impact than he was when the truck that was ahead of the video truck actually uh, swerved to the left to, to avoid him. Okay? Um, so that that's easy, okay? That next truck's not been there. It was on the road. Uh, it's called. However, there's another part to this, and that is preventability. The truck that had the camera on, uh, there's some things, that, there's some aspects of that that need to be looked at. How could he have prevented running into the back of the FedEx? Uh, as a professional driver, you are responsible for looking out for goof ups or screw ups that other drivers have. That is that's one of the your job professional. Uh, it's like if you were a pitcher, uh, you go out there, you're expected to throw uh, strikes and uh, put the other the other uh, batters out. That's that's what you get paid for. As a professional driver, you are to to avoid the mistakes that other people make. So I'm going to ask Aaron now to uh, to play this again. And I want you to think about while it's being played, what could the driver that did, that is in the cab, the, the camera truck, what could he have done to avoid this accident? All right. So, that again, Eric? Okay. Yes, yeah, the truck with the with the red truck here, this main truck with the with the camera. Right. It's playing. Okay. It, I stopped it after it made impact. Okay. Um, the driver of the red truck did a pretty good job with speed. Uh, he did a good job following distance. And he was good up until the point where the truck that he was following slowed down first and then swerve to the left. We've talked several times about complacency. The complacency means that you just you're just sitting there holding the steering wheel. You're not paying attention. Sorry guys, I lost them. Sorry, okay, lost you. I lost signal or something. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, he's just driving. He's just got his hands on the steering wheel. Um, foot on the pedal. I don't know what they're thinking about or what they're, what, what he was doing, but he really wasn't paying attention. The first alert should have been that the distance between him and the, the, his speed is consistent. And the distance between his speed and a distance, rather, between his truck and the truck that it was leading changed and then the other truck moved over to the left that should have been uh another signal now what i don't know is whether there was a, a vehicle to the left of the red truck okay but that is something you should always be aware of when you're driving and that is 
who is who is in the lane that you may need to turn that you may need to turn into very quickly. You should know automatically. Do I have vehicles on my left, or I have vehicles on my right? And and if I make a sudden move, is it going to affect them? Now it doesn't look like after he hit. It doesn't look like there's anybody going on, but we we don't know that. But again, complacency. Vehicle distance changed. Truck moved suddenly to the left. No signal. Just moved to the left. Should have been paying attention. That's the preventability part of it. So you can get lost sometimes in the fact that, oh, yeah, it's his fault. It's the FedEx truck's fault. Yes, it is. It's his fault. But that's not, that's not as professional driver what you're expected to do. You're expected to prevent other people's screw-ups. Okay. Not always possible. There are circumstances that prevent that from happening. For instance, if there was a vehicle to the red truck's left, so he could not change lanes. I get that. And I don't have the telemetry uh, on this on this to show that he slowed down. Even. I don't know if he slowed down or not. I can't read. I can't read that. But that would be another thing. Did you did, did the brakes apply? Now FedEx requires us to have automatic braking systems, uh, and I don't know whether whether that was activated or not. But these are things that you need to be thinking about constantly while you drive. You need to be paying attention, and complacency is the big issue besides distraction. And that is, you're just doing it, driving down the road, got your hands up, weak, pedal to the metal, and you're just going. You're not really paying attention because things can happen in an instant. And in this case, it's exactly what happened. Now, I'm going to ask Aaron one more time to play it again. And I want you to think about the things that I've just said, I uh, just talked to you about. All right, it's playing. I guess I got another question. What what should be our our in our minds when we have trucks passing us in wide open freeway? Uh, what's what, whether the truck is going to pull uh, pull to the right in front of you before you actually uh, before you actually pass? <laughs> yeah. Whether he's going to change lanes, whether he's going to back go back to the right lane without clearing you or giving you enough space. The other thing I'll be thinking is if I'm going the speed limit and he's able to pass me, obviously he's speeding, so I really got to watch out for him doing anything erratic. Because he's already taken that that uh, that risk already. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether the red truck is governed or not, or what the other truck is not governed. I don't, or what the speed limit was. Don't know any of that. But that's a good point. All right. It made impact again. Okay. Now, if you notice, there was an attempt to change lanes, and it doesn't look like he was slowing down any. So that means that he was, he was panicked. It's like, oh, my goodness, and was not alert enough to be able to react. So that's, that's the preventability part of it. You really have to pay attention. Thank you. Can, can we also discuss if we switch vehicles and we were, we were the FedEx truck pulling, let's say we were coming off the, the median, God forbid we were swerving off and coming back in. That probably would that probably would tell you either distracted or or tired. But if we're pulling up, we're on the median and we're getting ready to pull back onto the freeway and we get rear ended like this. What 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 are some of the things we could uh, do differently there? Well, for one thing, he was pulling back on without paying any attention to the oncoming traffic. It is obvious from the fact that the truck that was in front, the white truck that had passed the red truck. He had to swerve over right away. Now, swerving over, that gave, that gives me the impression that the FedEx truck was actually coming on to the road and was not there already. Because if he was there already, I think that truck would have moved over to the left sooner. But again, there's that little red pickup on the right, on his left rather, that may have prevented him from being able to pull, to pull over. But 
if you're you're you should be able to clear you're you're starting whatever the speed limit is starting from zero speed you need to make sure that the lane is clear way back so that you can get up to speed you cannot enter onto a roadway or freeway or highway uh, uh um, unless you have you're up to speed where everybody can uh uh avoid you it's on to it's it's a responsibility of the entering vehicle to be safe and to be uh, at speed that's a great point so BSB before you enter back entering back onto the freeway uh, from the median. And then if this if this was say a driver in the FedEx truck and it, it was rearing like this, would that be preventable or would that be considered uh, non-preventable for the, the FedEx driver? The FedEx driver, he's he's the cause. Okay. Even, even though he got rear-ended. Even though he got rear-ended, yes, he's the cause. Because he was entering the freeway. If the, if the FedEx truck was there already, yes, then then he would be okay. But again, uh, he didn't have flashes on. There were no flashes on. There was nothing to indicate that he was sitting there or he was stuck there. And like I said, from from the from the, the position that I can see, it looks like the FedEx truck actually started to come onto the freeway or onto the highway uh, without looking. Just moved on because right. as the white as the white truck passes him, he's not. He's only have like one tire, maybe maybe half half a, a tire, half a set onto the onto the road, and then as the 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 white truck actually changes lanes, he moves over even more. And by the time he's impacted, he's more than half way onto onto the Right. Do you recommend to if you're on that side median and you're trying to build up speed to enter into the freeway, should the flasher remain on or should just the blinker be applied or you both? Should have your, you should have your turn on. You should not actually move on the road until you gain some speed unless, unless uh, the stoner is not... Uh, you're not capable of doing it, like you got mud or sand, or grass, or something like that. But if you can, but if you can, on if you're on the shoulder and it's paved, and you can get up to speed, you should be up to maybe 10, 15 miles an hour before you actually move on to the road. Again, you should not move on until you've got plenty of time to get up to speed before somebody comes. And if you can't get on with that, then you just sit and wait. That's good. That's good. Any any questions or comments um, out there in the group? This is some good information, a good breakdown of this video. If you do just unmute yourself. All right, guess not. Yeah, you can, you guys could go ahead and start with those. Uh, we're, we're done with the video. There was no other questions or comments. Ready for the agenda or the uh, updates. And for the first part of the agenda, uh, Aaron uh, FedEx says that right now they are going to be in the inspect category, meaning that any person who's driving a truck with a FedEx a equipment are expected to be to have more roadside inspections. And they fall into that category because of hours of services and people not being able to transfer data and have their medical card and their glasses on. 
So that's one area that affects that. Okay, and then here, what provokes those site inspection, road site inspections, it's like what the, the law enforcement use to, to decide if they're gonna stop you or not, it's because of safe driving uh, behavior, like going over five miles per hour, like in top of the speed limit, or reckless driving, eating. In Georgia, we know eating and drinking, you're gonna get stopped. And they say that though that like around a 40% of those uh, roadside inspections that are provoked are in the driver's hand. It's either equipment or the driver's uh, basically fault. And the next page is the Lukmo Corp update. And here it's like, remember peak season. October 1st, are you ready, Brian? You wanna do this one? It's up to you. Got it, got it. All uh, right, guys, we just need you to, uh, this is a model. I just need, we need you guys to uh, remember, peak season is coming up. It's here from October 1st to January the 7th. And you gotta remember, we are scheduled to work on holidays this peak season. Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's. Please do not request vacation or time off during peak season. Kids and family around the nation are counting on you. Why not? Why not? Now the wildlife says wildlife awareness. Deer, rooting season. Deer rooting season occurs between the middle of October and early December when deer mate. As a result, deer are more active, which significantly increases the risk of hitting one while driving. So just keep alert, keep your eyes out. Just keep that uh, looking for the side of the road. That's where you always hang out. And make sure they don't jump in front of you. Just keep an eye out. Oh, that's it, guys. So you guys have a safe rest of the week. And uh, and we'll talk again soon. Be safe. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you.